This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Today we'll discuss about uh, the file systems. And uh, do you have any queries about the last session? Uh, no. Okay, clear, right? How the synchronous flows works, waterfall, mm -hmm. parallel, everything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So in Node.js, uh, most of the times, uh, buddy used to use one word called IO, that is uh, input and output. So there are two kinds of IOs, they will say. So the first one is that is directly connected with the TCP IP protocol. Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Okay. You're able to see my screen, right? Yeah. Okay. So in input output, that is IO, there are two kinds of things are there. One is, uh, which is connected through TCP IP protocols, like uh, HTTP calls or connecting to your database, everything. The everything is based on the server client connection. So we will get data from some other source. And another one of uh, one kind of IO is, directly reading uh, data from the same hard disk or the, from the same server. So for accessing those kind of data, we will use file systems. That is, we can uh, save some data on the files, we can write, we can update, we can delete, and uh, we can do those kind of operations using files in Node.js. Okay, so till last class we saw about uh, how can we handle asynchronous things from the uh, some other uh, downstream systems using HTTP protocol. So today we'll see about uh, how the uh, file system works and uh, so what is the file system, everything in the node Okay. Mm -hmm. Actually file system is one of the uh, internal module in Node.js. As I earlier said, so Node.js is a framework that is built on V8 and uh, LibUV framework. So uh, along with that, they have uh, given so many plugins or so many modules for us to handle uh, the development easily. So one of the system is file systems. So in this Node.js website, you can see so many things here. C++ add-on, chat process cluster, command line options. Everything is one of the modules that is already given in Node.js. These are all called um, built-in modules in Node.js. So one of the major modules is uh, file system, which is highly used in uh, real-time systems. So if you go into file system, you can see so many things here. But uh, most of the times, if you handle files, we used to do are uh, for writing and reading the files. For example, uh, here you can see that fs dot read this is for reading the file and uh, read file sync read file sync in the sense coming up we can read yeah. uh, your uh, other screen i mean it's just uh... oh sorry one second oh you're not seeing right mm -hmm. now yeah 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 okay so this is the so you can see that you have first order read. This is for reading the file 
and uh, fs dot uh, read file for reading the file uh, the entire file and you can see something called fs dot read sync this will uh, read the file synchronously synchronously in the sense uh, blocking like uh, it will the code will be waiting till uh, we are reading the entire file then only the next line will be started working so but if you go for fs dot read not sync means at the last parameter would be callback callback is a function so we should pass one function here that would be executed after uh, the file is read successfully so this is asynchronous method and this is synchronous method fs dot read sync and this is normal fs dot read so in such way you can uh, see many things like synchronous and normal things for reading writing deleting file everything Here you can see write file. You can directly write the file here and uh, write file sync. This will happen synchronously. Okay. So this is some overview of the file system. And uh, let's go into the code now and uh, let's create some examples for the file. Let's name it as read file. So we don't want uh, this content now. So for reading or writing a file, first of all, we need to require uh, file system let's take variable f plus equal to file system so now we are requiring fs and uh, we don't need to manually install this FS now. For async and request and all, uh, we use the command npm space install space async because those are uh, third party modules. So we are manually installing and that would be saved on uh, node modules folder. But FS is a uh, built in module in Node.js, so we don't need to manually install anything. Mm -hmm. Start read file. So we should give file name and uh, next argument would be a callback as it is an asynchronous method. Get a comma data. When error comes, I'll throw that error away. Single condition. That is no error in reading the file. So I'm just sending the data back to the 
control so here variable file name equal to i need to give a file name so before that let's create one file inside This file name is test file dot txt on one txt file. So let's have some content here. Um, uh, yesterday in interview, that lady asked yeah. uh, how we connect uh, Angular uh, with the database like Oracle. I said database. So okay. What was the exact question? Uh, like, uh, first of all, Angular life cycle and how you create a project in Angular, she asked. So, I just okay. say, uh, CLI first and then the NPM and then create uh, this files, I mean, uh, uh, modules and all like that, I, I told. And then okay. uh, she asked uh, how you connect uh, Angular uh, with the database uh, because I said I'm using uh, Oracle database. Okay. But so, I haven't seen anything okay. about <laughs> So first of all, uh, we cannot directly connect Angular with the database. Okay. Okay. Because database is a backend. But we can uh, connect... Uh, uh, so we, uh, we should connect through some uh, service. Suppose uh, now we are writing one service, right? So from yeah. this service, we can connect database and we can connect Angular with this service. So there might be a middleware between the front end Angular and the database. That, that can be any service based on the Java, Node.js, anything. So that oh. server would be directly connected with uh, Oracle or some, some database. And it will get the, uh, it will raise the request to the database. It will get the response from that. Again, it will parse the data and send back in the request or the response from the Angular. So this is the general flow. But oh. there is one more way also to connect uh, from Angular. Uh, but but uh, that is not a good practice and generally people won't do like that. Because mm -hmm. from the Angular, yesterday we saw right uh, for making uh, downstream calls, we used some module called request. Yeah. So in yeah. the same uh, at the top, we have required uh, this module. So this module can be used in Angular also. So in Angular also, you can use the same module uh, request for making HTTP calls. So from Angular, you can directly make some HTTP calls, like uh, you are hitting some service. If mm -hmm. Oracle or some other couch basis, uh, I mean some other databases exposed as a service, we can directly connect using HTTP service call through request module. In that mm -hmm. time, uh, if you make a request and that will give you some response, based on that response, you can directly pass that data. So here the answer is uh, we can make uh, HTTP calls through request module. Okay. But that is not the proper way or the, uh, that is not the good practice. Generally, we shouldn't connect uh, databases from uh, UA level. We should connect from uh, service. I mean, we should connect to the standard service. And from that service only, that should be connected. So service should uh, handle the data from uh, database. Again, it should send back to the UA. That would be the real-time system. But if they ask if there are any possibility means the answer is yes, we can oh. connect. If uh, a database is exposed as a service, we can connect through HTTP protocol services. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. Is, is there any other questions? Um, no, one question is common for all like uh, hash map and hash table difference and concurrent hash map and uh, normal hash map difference like this two questions i think almost everyone asks okay yes yes data structures that would be a, one of the important concept in java hash map hash table yeah and, and the set and map also the right yeah yeah has set uh, and has map has difference. Yes. Yeah. yes yes no you should understand the difference between everything that's only yeah. that question would be asked everywhere if you are a beginner in java yeah Okay. And how you answered everything is fine, right? Um, yes, but I think yesterday, like one was with the CTS, I told you, right? So yeah. the interviewer, 
I think uh, she was not seemed to be interested because I think she came back home and then she had to take my interview. So I was okay. getting uh, TV sound from the back end. <laughs> back side and I was like she is just asking me for the formality and she was not listening to my answers and again okay. she was asking some complex questions so even my proxy person said she was just doing time pass with you <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. two interviews didn't happen I mean one with the TCS okay uh, one with the PNC the second round so okay. They rescheduled to Monday and TCS guys didn't answer at all. I mean, why uh, there is no interview, nothing this okay. year. Okay, okay, fine, fine. Okay. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. No, no, no problem. Okay, so we'll uh, create one text file from here, okay? Mm -hmm. So, so, let's, so it's just a normal text file. So we are going to read this file from here. So the file name is test file dot txt. So now we have made a service for reading this file. This let's make a service for reading a file. This is get trade file. So we are connecting the service with the root. Let's restart the server. this route there is some error has been thrown ENO ENT means file not found okay. so we got some error whenever we, we tried to take this file so the control has been run inside this error loop if it is coming here it is trying to fetch this file but it's unable to find that file Okay, let's find the reason now. So it is taking absolute path. So there are two kind of paths. One is absolute path and another one is relative path. Relative path in the sense we are giving path from the folder or from the file while it is running. So now we have given as a relative path because the file is placed inside services folder. So just we have given us text file.txt as this both uh, our JSON service two and the text files are placed in the inside the same service. But the system is accessing absolute path. So now we are giving absolute path here. And let's try now.
just let's print the file now. You can see where is the file. Yes, now we got the response. So here what you are doing is path is an NPM module that is for handling the path because now we are we have made a server, right? So the server will be running inside one of the path. So if you use path means uh, we can uh, because every server has its own path. If you deploy something on the Linux server that will be having its own path. If it is a Windows server, that would be started from the D colon or something, right? So like that. So in, we uh, for everything we don't. Uh, I mean, we cannot find exactly the path. So generally, uh, the path is an NPM module that will give you so many things to handle the path. So here, path are join we're using. So underscore underscore directory name will give you the exact absolute path of the current directory. So here, the current directory is uh, JSON service folder D colon slash my app. To slash service slash JSON service, and uh, inside that we are just appending uh, text file dot txt. So we are connecting both the current directory and file dot txt. So in the console you can see now the exact file path. See d colon slash my app to slash services slash text file dot txt. So that's what we are printing here. So file name. We don't need this one. So you got it right. Just we are concoordinating uh, two paths, the current path and the file. And we are using fs.read file and we are sending the data back to the response. Mm -hmm. And we got this data. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if you so now what we have done is we are directly writing something on the file and uh, we just uh, created a service to get the response directly in the browser suppose you want to pass the data means how we are getting the data so, let's see so now i'm putting on console log here for the data
so now you can see that how the file is ripped it is throwing you some characters buffer 68 65 60 c got in this mm -hmm. but we have just printed as hello world why it is printed like this so whenever I, the file is reading from the file it will use buffer memory this is called buffer memory and uh, using this buffer memory everything would be en encrypted here in before uh, getting into the actual value so these are the encrypted data from the actual data so let's try to convert this to the string now Now you can see that we got the actual data. Hello world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But the thing is, we have added dot to string. So instead of sending directly the response to the back in real time examples, we will read uh, from a particular file and we will iterate everything and we will add something again. Uh, we will save on database or we will send back to the uh, UI side. So for that, first of all, we should read the data inside the callback. We should convert that to the to the string using dot to string method so then only we can uh, really see the actual data otherwise uh, we can see only the encoded data like this okay so now i'm making to string and if we want to but in real times uh, actually it is a string but uh, these things are uh, not in an element i mean uh, here we have given one two three four five hello worlds right mm -hmm. but the string will take everything as a single value i mean uh, everything will be uh, a concatenated one not as a splitted one so generally in real time examples if you t if you read some data from a file means you will convert that to the string and you need to split up with slash n So slash in, in the sense, it uh, it means it's a new line. So everything would be split and it will give you the uh, data in the array. So now I'm going to split this data. I'm putting into an array. And I'm printing that array. Now you can see this. This is the data has been put into an array. Hello world slash r. So now if you, you try to see the length of the array. You can see it is throwing us five. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now what we have done is from a flat file, we have read the data and we have uh, split everything by line by line using slash n. If you use slash n means it will uh, take every line as a yeah. single value and it yeah. will put into an array. Mm -hmm. So in real time examples, uh, we want to have some simple hello world thing. We'll be having some real time objects, so JSON objects. So the time we'll use like this kind of split and uh, we will collect all the objects into an array and from the array we'll use some for loops or some loops to iterate the data then uh, we will uh, manipulate the data and we'll send back or we'll uh, save on to the database okay this is how generally we'll handle uh, for file systems um okay. just a, yeah just a minute
hello yeah i felt that someone came at home but i checked and no one came <laughs> yeah. okay yeah can you continue yeah sure okay so this is how we are reading a file in this scenario we have uh, read the file using asynchronous call so we have given the file name and we have given a callback method this is the good practice and there is one more way also there that is we can read data asynchronously so there is a small difference in this so again we are going to read uh, file sync so synchronous in the sense there is no callback method will be passed to there so i'm just removing the callback method i'm you going to use variable data so it will use some uh, a normal method and it will return the data not calling the callback so i'm just taking the file name and i'm just reading the file i'm using method name read file sync so once i read the file i'm just printing on console.log file read success okay you can in the callback i am just sending the data back so in this scenario that is the file is read asynchronously so it won't the fs.read is a method and it won't wait for the execution of the control flow so it will trigger this fs.read with this file name the so file would be read and once that read is completed it will call this callback method it will assign the read data into this data variable so the data variable we are directly accessing um, here using some dot to string and split and we are sending back but in this method the here we are trying to use the same uh, file to read but until uh, the file is read it uh, it won't execute the next console line so it will wait here it will read the file it will assign the data into the data variable and it will uh, call the console log and it will send back to the ui you got the difference right between the sync and asynchronous methods mm -hmm. yeah okay so let's put one more root here let's restart the server create file sync now also we got the same data so here we are printing the file name once it is read it is throwing file read success the same process but that is asynchronous and it is synchronous but it's always good to go with asynchronous flow based on our requirement only we should go for synchronous okay yeah. now let's write a new file we saw an example for reading so how are we going to write
you we are going to use test file 2 we are passing the file name and the content to be written small string so we are going to write or create a new file with this string so i'm pausing that value again uh, it is an asynchronous method so i'm going to pass one callback method here Just sending success. And if it is success, first argument should be a null value. So I don't want to assign on a variable here. So let's create a root here. Let's restart the server. So I'm going to write this file. We got success here. Now let's see inside the folder whether the file is got created or not. Let's save my app to inside services. You can see that test.file2 is created. See here yeah, I'm written successfully got it yeah this is how we are writing a file but in most of the scenarios we use in writing the file we use to get the data from the front end not uh, these kind of hard-coded values so in the same example we are going to modify a little bit so i'm going to get this value from the ui variable content equal to First dot body dot content. I'm passing this content value to the service. Inside this service, I got this value, and I'm commenting this content. I'm going to pass my content here. Now I'm restarting this server. So I'm going to try this file. So I need to pass the content here. In the name of content. 
I'm passing something here. Some content. I'm making a service call now. Now we got the success. Now let's check whether the value has been updated or not. Now you can see in test two. This content is passed from our UI. Got it? Mm -hmm. This is how we can write the file. Yeah. So generally in real time scenarios, we'll get a very big objects or the uh, data of the user or some uh, about some product from the UI from the Angular and uh, we'll write into the file based on the request. Now we have just given some small string here and we have saved the data and the file has been created. Okay. And if you don't want to, sorry, and uh, now we have seen uh, how to read and write and uh, write sync also the same way. So here we saw some get read file sync, right? In the same way we can write, write file sync. That will write the file synchronously. The same process will be happening. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, how to delete a file? Let's see. Remove file. Just so let's remove the test file to itself. There is a command called unlink. So now inside services, we have two files. One is test file, another one is test file two. Now we have created one service for deleting a file. Let's have a try. Remove file. We got some error. CB is not a function. Okay. So here we have passed one more extra parameter. So we should remove this. Now I'm just starting to say. Now I'm hitting the call and I got the file not available. Why? Because it, now you can see inside services, there is no file, test file two. Because at the first hit itself, it has been removed from this command using and link. Then only it was trying, it was uh, trying to access that CB. So in this line, it was throwing error like CB is not a method. So before throwing the error itself, the file is been deleted. So now we are again trying to delete the same file. So it is unable to find the file in this path. Okay, so it is throwing some error. ENO, ENT mean file not found. Got it? Yeah. Okay, now for test purpose, again we are creating a new file. test file 2 so now test file 2 is there and we are going to delete this now it will give us success method and it will delete that file we got the success and the file has been removed okay so these are the some major methods for handling files 
So reading, writing, removing, everything. Other than this uh, node has been given with the so many modules here. You can see in this talk itself. This first of read stream. So this is also ready file. Uh, before that, I'll explain you. So there is one more uh, concept in Node.js called streams. Okay. So it's generally if you read some files, if you write some files, or if you're doing some process, or if you're assigning some values on some variables, like this variable file name equal to something means, it will have some size of memory, right? If it is a file means, it will be having some KB or MB file. And if you are assigning on that some uh, variable, this memory would be occupied by the RAM. So whenever you are restarting the Node.js itself, it would be having some default space for accessing the files. I mean, not only accessing the files, just for uh, the internal purpose of the node. So in that uh, memory, generally the variables would be occupying the RAM size. Suppose if this file has some uh, two MB files mean, it would be occupied on this variable two MB. But in real time scenarios, there may be some systems uh, that that will be giving very big in size. I mean, in the files or some response from the data, everything. So if, if it has some uh, the data in very big in size, like, uh, there may be some data in GB also, one to one GB, two GB. Whenever we are trying to handle those kind of very big data inside the Node.js, the automatically the memory or the CPU utilization will be very high on that time. So it will uh, lead us to for uh, um, in very uh, latency or the performance would not be good. Suppose if you are handling a very big file inside your service. Now, in the same time, if you're trying to hit a, a new request from the browser means that would uh, get very slow response because almost all the memory is occupied by this file, right? So these kind of scenarios can be faced in the real time scenarios, I mean, handling very big in size the data. So for that, Node.js has given uh, some solution called streams. So streams in the sense, you can make anything that is readable or writable as a streams. So for example, we are using some files here. So the files can be readable or the writable. We can write uh, content into the file, or we can uh, read some. Uh, sorry, we can write some content into the file, or we can read some content from the file. So it is readable and writable, right? Mm -hmm. So we can make these files as a streams. I mean, a source for the streams. So, so if you if you are making those files as a streams, the Node.js won't consider as a normal file. It will consider as a stream. So you can uh, connect two streams using your pipe. Actually, this concept will be a bit confusing. You just okay. listen and uh, you can understand. So you can connect two streams using pipe. So you can create one read stream and you can create one write stream and you can connect with the pipe. Then the data from the read stream would be automatically taken and it would be written on the write stream without holding any memory. Here, the main purpose of the stream is the memory. Suppose if you're handling very big file uh, around one GB or two GB means, you shouldn't use directly these kind of uh, methods to access the file and setting on some variable. So the entire memory of the node will be gone. So we should use streams. We should make that uh, uh, mean the source file as a stream, as a readable stream, and we should make another uh, uh, stream that is called the writable stream for the destination file, and we should connect both the things with the pipe. So now the data from the read stream would be directly written to the uh, writable stream without holding any memory. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is not only for the file systems for all the readables and writables. For example, in roots, we have uh, request and responses, right? Whenever you are hitting some request and response from the UI, you'll get a request and response variable. So we can write this is also we can make it as uh, streams like you can write something on request and you can read something from the uh, response. So if you are, if you, for example, if you want to take uh, some values from the request and if you want to set that back to the response means, you can connect, I mean, you should make the request as the read stream and the response as the write stream and you can connect using pipe between these two. So now the value from the request would be directly accessed by the response. This is the concept of streams. Mm -hmm. You got it? Actually, it's confusing, right? Yeah, but I mean, I can, uh, see the video again. Okay, okay, yes, then you can understand. So now let's 
write a one small example for uh, stream in the same example let's take file dot text okay here we have a very big content so it is a file with some contents and now i'm going to create test file 2.txt it is an empty file okay so let's we are going to write the content of file 1 i mean file test file to the test file 2 but we are not going to use any write file content read file or write file so instead of that we are going to use streams to handle this So step one, I'm going to use one uh, first dot create a read stream. A read stream in the sense I'm going to make that file as a readable one. So I'm just passing this file name here. So read string. So I'm just making this file as a read string, not file test file two, test file one. So now it is a read string. Again, I'm going to create one write string. Again, I'm passing the file name two. Here, the file name would be test file two. This is file name two. I'm not unlinking anything. Okay. I'm just returning successful. successful. Okay, let's create a root for this. This is called get string. So we are going to use the method get stream here. Okay. So now in file test file two, no content is there. Test file. Okay. We have some content, and we are going to connect both the streams now using pipe. It is read as three dot pipe. It is two. Now both the streams are connected. Now let's put the string. 
and a bit. We got the success method. Now let's open this file. You can see the entire content of the file one is moved to file two. You got it right? Yeah. But we are not using any read method or write method. We have used streams here. So the exact use of the streams you can fill when the file size is very big. In some around 500 MB, 600 MB, 1 GB on that time, and it would be happening in fraction of seconds. It won't sit on the memory; it will directly write into the uh, writable streams. So simply, what we need to do is we need to create one read stream, write stream, and we can pipe it inside this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we are good for the day. And uh, do you have any queries today? Um, Presenters? No. Okay, okay, bring you just have a look on those things. Yeah, sure. And if you have any queries, and we'll see that later, okay? And if you yeah. are facing any questions in the interviews also, you just let me know. Right yeah, sure. And I'll help you, yeah. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bye-bye.